Heights. White Heights, yeah. East LA. Well, Camp Pendleton was O'Neill's. It was owned by the O'Neill family, by an O'Neill, and it was taken off and by by force by during the um, after the Second First World War rather, and named after a Marine. Uh, uh, I've forgotten whether it was Colonel or whatever uh, Pendleton, who had got shot or something. I don't know. So the Irish were not ever memorialized in uh, as they should have been. I think um, here, right here in San Diego, and in all up and down uh, uh, the, the, East Co the West Coast. But I think particular. Well, that you can't you can't deny them San Francisco. I mean, they own San Francisco. Um, I think there was like a third or 30 something percent of the voter registration in like the very early 19 or 1850s or you know the very early thing uh, were actually Irish born not Irish but like born in Ireland so I mean there were huge um, uh, influence there but um, of course they've become uh, associated with um, the uh, with Boston and New York um, but um, I, I, I think they made a bigger impression in the Midwest coming in through Canada at an earlier stage, and you know, more broad spread. spread um, um, I'm from central Illinois. Yeah. And every, well, my family, when they came from Ireland, I mean, I have a hundred year family farm mm. that has been in my family for, for a hundred years. There you go. Bought in 1899 by my great grandfather, who came left Ireland about 1843 and really? came up through the port of New Orleans. Oh wow! He was only like 14, and we don't know if he came in legally or illegally. We wow! Picked tobacco in Arkansas and then came up to uh, Champaign County, Illinois. But the whole area there, all those small towns in central Illinois. And some of them, only a few hundred population. They all had a grain elevator, a tavern, and a Catholic church. <laughs> and they still do. And they still do. To this day. Well, he was a survivor of all survivors if he survived New Orleans because the Irish were brought in and they were building the levees. And uh, they could allow them to die. They replaced slave labor because... A slave was an asset. It cost you money. The Irish, get another one. And what had happened was, the reason there were so many Irish came into New Orleans was, the the uh, cotton trade was really building up, and the English were bringing uh, back bringing back cotton by an, an incredible amounts into um, Manchester and Liverpool. In fact, they built a canal all the way from Liverpool up through the Manchester Canal because that's where the mills were, up deep into the hills. If you know the geography of that area of Lancashire. So they, they would bring the, the, um, the, the, the cotton uh, all the way up to the mills. Now, the, they had to go back empty, literally. So you could get uh, on a ship going to New Orleans. They weren't going to New York. They were, going, they were loading up cotton. Um, so your, your great-grandfather probably came from Ireland to Liverpool, probably with his family or whatever, you know. He was about 14. About 14. And he said maybe with an aunt and uncle. Yeah, he'd have been with somebody. And he would have, with zero money, would just maybe have indentured himself or in some way gotten on, on board a ship going back empty, a cotton ship going back to New Orleans. And he was fodder for those mills. But he was probably smart enough to take off. But he was tough enough to survive too. Because if he had stayed in New Orleans, he would have died within a month. Mm -hmm. the, the average uh, lifespan for them once they got there was literally about a month. And they didn't care because there was plenty more coming from them. There was yeah. more, every boat that... Huh? I, I don't have her... The Oh, she said, "Did he marry an Irish girl?" He, uh, he settled up in Central Illinois. Uh -huh. It's some of the richest farmland. Yeah. In the world. Well, he was a, he, he was a smart kid. Well, yeah, but, yeah. Some came in from Canada. Some of my family. But how he got up there must be a heck of a story in itself. Yeah. And again, he probably. I have a, an old book. Yeah. That he wrote 
he didn't spell right because yeah. he didn't have much schooling. Yeah. But he apparently he went up. I know he went and picked tobacco in Arkansas. Yeah. And then he we, he had an old book where he wrote in the margins. Somehow he made it to San Diego because what? it's written Colonia de San Diego. Wow. In the margins that he wrote just little notes. I have that book. Holy mackerel! Yeah. He went and then he and then ended up in Illinois. In Illinois. Wow. What a character he must have been. He was from Cork. He was from Cork. He was from Meath. Meath. Royal Meath. Wow, that kid was that he was some survivor. <laughs> wow. He knew exactly what not to do. And he kept going. So he wow. Did he ever join the military? Because he might have been in in um, in, in uh, Carney, General Carney's army. The Army of the West, because most of the people, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because most of the Irish who came out during that period, remember the Army of the West under under Kearney was, I think he said almost 100 percent Irish. I mean, it was nearly all Irish, uh, and they were the ones who, yeah, who, who essentially, um, Mexican War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Army of the West, um, and of course camped out here in what is now Miramar. It's still, well, yeah. Kearney Mesa, that's where it's named after, you know. You know he was buying farmland in Illinois in the 1890s. He was. Quite what exactly. Yeah. But he'd had some okay. before he got the farm that I had. Uh, what was that first one lot? When they uh, did the Homestead Act and divided mm -hmm. everything up and then the railroads came through mm -hmm. and got we thought it was every other section. It was every other section in a township, which was 36 square miles, mm. that the railroad road went through. So the railroad got quite a bit of land. Oh, yeah. We've gone back and researched records. And so then those sections were sold off to people by the railroad. Yes. And he did buy 160 acres in one of those sections. In one of the sections, yeah. In 1862 or three or four or something. Yeah. Okay, but it was railroad subdivided land. Railroad, yeah, and then yeah. he sold that one and got the one that I have owned now in 1899. Well, he must have been associated with either the railroads or the army, mm -hmm. probably both, because a lot of them did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, General Dodge, the army, the railroads had to wait until the end of the Civil War, mm -hmm. until General Dodge. Would, 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 he built the, he won the civil, he won for the Union side, literally. Um, Abraham Lincoln said he could never, he could never won the, the war without General Dodge. General Dodge was the, he engineered the railroads, built the railroads. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how they, they just moved everything around. It was like Hitler with the Ottomans. And then, of course, soon it was over, then they, they built the, the Great Transcontinental Railroad. So somehow or other, he must have done both, because a lot of them did that. Um, although he was after the Civil War, wasn't he? He got here about 1843. So he that was early? Before the Civil War. Yeah. Oh, well, then he, had, he was absolutely... And he was 14 then, so he had plenty of time to yeah. do whatever he wanted. He did. Then he was no question in the world. He, at some stage, would have been in the military. He would definitely, and he could very well have been in, in either Kearney's or Dodge's uh, command. Wow. That is amazing. That is such an American story. Yeah, yeah. Really. 